Hi, I'm Spencer Krauss. I've been building robots for over 20 years. In that time, I've seen a lot of interesting things, and I've heard a lot of interesting stories. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is a place where my colleagues and I can relax, have a drink, and talk about some of the crazier things we've seen at work and some of the experiences we've had that have gotten us to where we are today. Subscribe today to join the collaboration. Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Krauss. Our guest today is Jonathan Kirstein. Jonathan is the VP of Communications and Media at the Pittsburgh Technology Council. Jonathan, welcome to the pod. I can't thank you enough for having me stop by. It's always fun to be on someone else's podcast. So it's it's, it's always great to have the, the, the thing turned around on you a little bit. So I'm very excited. You're the only person I think I've interviewed who's interviewed way more people than me. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I've I've been doing this for almost 30 years, and I have interviewed so many people, and it never gets old. It's always fun because everyone's different, right? I was thinking about that while we were headed over. Is like this is a man who has interviewed probably thousands of people. I've done 140 interviews. That's great. That's that's 140 more than most people. I can Fair tell enough. you that right now. No, that that that's that's a I I commend you. Well, thank you. <laughs> that's not counting the ones they threw out because they weren't fit for public consumption. Well, that's okay too. <laughs> All of mine have been fit for public consumption. <laughs> I've had to trash like maybe four of them. <laughs> so I tell you, I was there was so I was thinking about this podcast ahead of time, and and um, I was like thinking, I'm probably going to be your most non technical guest you've ever had. Cause you interview like, like engineers and like super smart people, people are building stuff. Like pretty damn smart yourself. Well, I'm not stupid, but, <laughs> but I'm not I an agree. engineer. I would love to be an engineer. I envy engengineers. I always thought it'd be cool. Cause I like building stuff, but, but, uh, but yeah, so like, I'm not, a, I'm not a technical guy, but I like telling the stories of technical people though. So I guess so I count. How'd you decide to go into that? Like, I mean, yeah. how does one become a tech journalist? Uh, it was pure happenstance. So, I mean, true story is I, I got a degree in, in journalism and you know, Man, those jobs aren't exactly <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Fair so I, I literally took, like, I had an internship at the Swickley Herald. I, I took, um, I, after being an intern there, they offered me 28 hours a week to be the sports editor. And I know nothing of sports, right? I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I know football and some stuff a little bit, but, like, not a passionate sports guy. But I'm like, it's a job. I'll take it, right? And, of course, like, you take something, it's going to lead to other stuff. So I took it and tried to get into football and stuff. But as that happened, you, know, you start doing other reporting, and, and that kind of grew into a, a better position where I did more than sports. And they moved to some other newspapers. And then I ended up at the McKeesport Daily News back in 1995 or 6. And uh, that to me was like, oh, my God, I'm working for a daily paper. And it was it – was, <laughs> <laughs> it's I can just laugh at now because it's like my God when you're covering Wilmerding Borough Council meetings, you know I mean hey, it's like but, the C-span of print. It is like the C-span of print in many ways, but it's important because like one thing I learned was back in the '90s people read their newspapers and they were religious about it, and when something was messed up, they let you know about it. When they were happy about something, they let you know about it. So you felt like you're really part of these communities, even though they're these small communities. But there were times when you're just like. I can't do this for the rest of my life. I had a friend of mine who was actually, he was my former editor at the uh, Swickley Herald. He was a freelance writer for Pittsburgh TEQ magazine, the magazine that I'm now the publisher of, right? Awesome. And so he had told me that the Pittsburgh Tech Council was looking for a copy editor. And I was like, the Pittsburgh Tech Council, I'm like, I don't know nothing about them. I'm a copy editor. I'm like, I can copy edit, sure. And he was like, yeah, it's like, you know, no, you don't, at the time you had to wear a beeper when I was at the Daily News. Like, literally, you were a pager because and they, they would, would just call you if there was some shit. Yeah, down. yeah, like a barn fire in North Huntington Township, beep, beep, beep. And any time <laughs> of the day, and you had to go cover it. And like, no pagers. I'm like, I hated my pager. Like, it was <laughs> terrible being on call all the time. So I was like, I'll, I'll check it out and I'll apply, right? And, I applied and holy shit, they hired me. <laughs> so I was like, whoa. And so I, 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 yeah, I never looked back. I mean, I, I could tell print was, newspaper print was really dying in 1997, right? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I could, you could just see, I mean, I saw the salespeople having hard times. I mean, just, it was just, you could see it was shrinking and shrinking. And with the internet coming on at the time, it was like, people are putting stuff online now. Like, what do we do for a newspaper? How do we charge if people are just going online? And 
they still haven't really figured it fully out yet <laughs> 30 yeah. years later. But it was one of those deals where I just, I didn't want to be part of that scene. I didn't, I, I, and I wasn't one of those where I wanted to be this like star journalist, like doing breaking stories. I, I'm not, I'm not good with conflict, right? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm terrible with conflict. And you so, do have to be a little bit of an instigator, I would think. Yeah. To do well in that environment. Yeah. I don't, I don't instigate. I, that's just not in my nature. So anyhow, so I, I took this position and I had no idea I'd be there for 27 years. Still there, like, and having fun. And, and I, all I can say is this, my first day on the job, this is when I knew I made a right choice. This was so cool. I'll remember this forever. My boss took me out to meet with one of our member companies. They were a company called Vision Systems. They became a company called Cerebellum a little bit later on. But we met with the two founders, uh, Todd and Eric. We had lunch with them over at the Union Grill up on Craig Street. Oh, that's a great spot. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Because this is classic, right? This is classic, like, Pittsburgh Tech. Two CM These guys were still in school. So at the time, I was 25, and these dudes, were like I think a couple years younger than me and they were just getting ready to graduate <laughs> I'm like wait a second you haven't graduated yet and you have a company I think they had like five or six people working for them and they were like trying to make some city databases talk to each other I don't remember exactly what they're doing but it's something with making databases being able to talk to each other and I was like I'm sure they had some analogy to the brain with that name I would think so <laughs> and it was really rad because it was like they had a company I'm like, this is amazing and like they had they were they had customers and a few years later like they had a quite a quite amount of VC in them. I mean, they flamed out, don't get me wrong. As but 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 did. as many did, but it was to me it was amazing to say, wait, Pittsburgh has is a place where some twenty year old guys are starting a company. And I was like, this is cool. And this is what's gonna make Pittsburgh really badass. And I just kind of became hooked. And as I started meeting people who were building companies, I'm like, I love this place, man. I look at what you're doing, Spencer. So that was still going company. on in the 90s, though. Yeah, this is 1997, man. Awesome. Like, yeah. And so I was well, like, thank you, by the way. No, I'm telling you, this is why I, I look at folks like who are building companies. You guys are taking big risks, man. I, I look at it like this. So many people that I meet with, like you, you can work anywhere you want. You're super smart, man. That's any, nice any no, say. no. I'm 100. I'm, I'm being honest here. Some of these folks, they're geniuses. You know what you're doing. You can solve problems. You're building robots. I mean, you got a ping pong robot over there for crying out loud. <laughs> <laughs> I love ping pong. <laughs> nice. But I, I say, it's like, you could go and get, be paid a lot of money, right? And 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 work on the projects you got to work on. Not worry about payroll. Not worry about customers doing weird stuff like there, there's an easier <laughs> route I was just saying there's an easier route to make money but you, it's more than money it's about you want to build something that really changes the world right and that's why I sense about a lot of these folks that that's why they do it for themselves so I'm saying yeah and I like be, me being able to tell those stories as I do at the tech council through my podcast my radio show my magazines is so much fun and I feel like I'm like the luckiest dude in Pittsburgh because I get to do this and they pay me every couple of weeks so it works that's <laughs> awesome <laughs> And I got to say, I really enjoyed being on your podcast, too. And um, I admire what you do a hell of a lot. Well, thank you. There's not that many people that are telling our story. There's not. And that's so, I mean, so fair story. Like when I was first working, you know, doing copy editing and some news write or some, some feature writing for TEQ magazine, the Post-Gazette and the Tribune Review, they weren't writing about any tech companies. Like I remember when Glenn Meekum hired his 30th employee at Free Markets. If anyone knows Free Markets, they, they were one of Pittsburgh's biggest IPOs. It was like a two billion dollar IPO I think when, when that was happened. this this was this would have been in the late 90s early 2000s this is where my brain fog comes oh, in on dates and this guy like I mean he went for, I mean, he just I mean, skyrocketed that's like a three-year range to yeah be fair. exactly yeah yeah oh, but my brain in this day to age, 2001 yeah is what I'm thinking but that was like a lot of time for Pittsburgh though when yeah. you think about what was going on but but seeing someone that was like they wouldn't write about the fact that this guy had his 30th employee and that they're doing this really unique thing this reverse auction thing online oh that's awesome which which was never done before online. And he created a whole market. And typical media was like, but steel is still dying. And it's just like, oh, get over the steel stuff. Like, see, actually, still, still here. They're still making money at US Steel. Thumbs up. Super cool. They remember the tech council. They use a lot of technology to make steel, which I awesome. think is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. But there's also these other companies that are now taking the, the new lead. Think about it. I mean, Pittsburgh was the technological center of the world with steel. I mean, that was high technology. Yeah, and right? aluminum at Alcoa. And aluminum at Alcoa. And so this is just the next iteration of it. And to tell the story of it is really important. And I, 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 take, I take a lot of pride in saying I'll tell stories that some people aren't going to tell because it's not big enough for them. I mean, I've written about people that had made millions and millions of dollars way before they made their millions and millions of dollars and had that product that really changed people's lives. Collaborative with Spencer Krause is sponsored by SKA Custom Robots and Machines. 
If you're in the market for robotics contract engineering services, please consider hiring SKA Custom Robots and Machines. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Custom Robots and Machines can be found at www.ska.solutions. Who are some of the people you've gotten to interview? Oh, my God. Well, I mean, some folks, you may not even know the names. So take like Glenn Meekum, for example. I mean, Glenn's still around, but I remember him with, with, with Free Marks. I mean, that was one of Pittsburgh's biggest successes. Um, interviewing some of the founders of Four Systems back in the day. Like, oh, cool. I, I remember I talked with Eric Cooper a couple of times, you know, over some things that were going on over there. Um, actually, one of my favorite stories is getting to know Raul Valdez Perez. So he was a CMU guy. He, he founded a company called Vivisimo. And he sold it I've to, heard of that. Yeah, he sold it to IBM. Oh my God, must have been like six years ago. The pandemic makes my whole like you know time frame warp yeah, in like different the ways. Two years that didn't. Yeah, that didn't. And, and so, but he, I remember I met with him around 2000 at Kiva Han on Craig Street. Right. <laughs> That's kind of like I wouldn't. I'm gonna write a book and call it Craig Street, right? There was some good like, stuff there. You yeah. work at the Star of India as a busboy. Yeah, Star <laughs> of India on there as well too. So I remember him saying that he had this idea. He was gonna take his. He was gonna license his IP from uh, CMU around enterprise search. This is before people were. He was like, he, he explained to me, he was like, he was like, it's like Google for like large businesses. And I was like, huh? And he's like, yeah, you know, like, like the Library of Congress, they have all these books and things you need to find. My technology can help s- sort through that. I'm like, okay, I get it. I understand it. And he actually, for, he actually made a little search engine called Clusty for a while. It was like a little Google type thing, but that didn't pan out so well. But the, the enterprise search stuff, uh, over the course of 12 years with one investment round, he sold that company for a lot of money. He made a lot of millionaires in Pittsburgh. And I remember one of the funnest things about him was he had his, his first offices were on Beachwood, right next to Frick Park. And there's oh, this cool. little place now. Um, I remember visiting them and there was like 12 people piled into this office. It probably should hold no more than six. Was right? it like a house? Yeah, I mean, it was almost like, yeah, it was, it exactly. Been. It was like a house that was converted into like an office. Um, there's, like a, uh, there's like a home renovation company in there right now. Cause I ride my bike past it like awesome. all the time. And I remember telling him that I said, dude, I ride my bike past your place all the time. And I'm looking in there and I said, people are driving past there as much as I'm riding my bike past there, me driving my car past there. No one has any idea what you're doing in there. I said, you need a sign that says Vivisimo on. He's like, oh, you know, whatever. He, he's not worried about signs. He's worried, <laughs> he's worried about building his product, right? And I remember back, I did many stories with him, many interviews, many, many magazine things. I can, actually took a picture of him and his staff. They were huddled around his Honda Accord that had Vivisimo as the vanity plate on the back. Nice. So it was a, kind of a good look. But there was a day when- That was he, their sign. That was, well, that was kind of his sign, but he moved to Squirrel Hill um, on the corner where of, of uh, Forbes and Murray, where there's that three-story like building, the red brick building where the Rite Aid is underneath it. Yeah, I know the one you're talking so about. So he had, he took he took a floor or two in there, and there was one day they put a little Vivismo sign out there. It, it was it was nice. He <laughs> called me. He's like, dude. He's like, I put my sign up. I'm like, oh my god. So I went down. I'm like, cool, but it should be much bigger. <laughs> but, <laughs> but he was excited because he's like, I got my sign. But it was so cool to watch him build this company. He surfed the ups and the downs, and he was very methodical. And he sold it and made a lot of money and and other people there made money. And that's what we want people to do. He attracted people from around the world to work here and come to Pittsburgh. So it's one of those stories where like, I got to see that from him telling me what he was going to do to kind of saying, dude, put a sign on this thing. So I know what's going on (laughs) to him selling it. Those are the types of stories that make me really excited because I'm like, I got to be a little part of that. That's awesome. It's kind of fun. So. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the time you got to interview Howard Stern. We Whoa. started talking about that. Um, we did. At dinner, and I want to. I want to hear a little more about that story. It's cool. I, I'm so glad that I remembered that because it's been a while since I've thought about that. So I did actually get to interview Howard Stern when I worked at the McKee Sport Daily News. Um, it was awesome because his his movie Private Parts was coming out, and he was on a, obviously a media tour to promote it. And his folks you know, reached out to all the various you know, institutions to line up interviews. They lined ours up for, it was, it was early in the morning and it was on a Thursday, if I remember correctly. And um, they gave us a number to call in. We call in the number and they were like, well, thanks for calling in. Like, yeah, he's running behind. Can you call us back like in an hour? But he's, he's going to do this. We're like, okay, wait an hour. So we're like, wait an hour. We did this like four or five times until <laughs> like literally we're like, we're thinking, is this going to happen or not? But his people kept reassuring, like he's just running behind. He He's talking to everybody. He's very passionate about this. So uh, it was great to have 
good communication. We knew he was serious. And then like the magic moment happened. It's like we called and, and they give us a very, like, like a, a very discreet amount of time. They're like, you, you have this much time. And then at that point in time, we're going to have to cut you off because he's got to get to the next interview. So we're like, okay, we'll, we'll make the best of this. And so we had him on speakerphone. I was interviewing him along with our, our editor of the, uh, of, of the, uh, the entertainment section and we we're firing questions off, but he got on the phone and we were expecting him to be like, you know, the Howard Stern, like you know, making fun of us somehow. Like he couldn't see us, but we we're, we were thinking somehow he'd know who we are and he'd be like somehow poke in front of us like he would any guest <laughs> on his show but he was all like saying how happy how excited he was about the movie and he was like what do you want to ask me and then we went into our questions but i remember i i had to ask him i was like well howard i, I was like you know what was your favorite like scene in the movie like what got you most excited about making a movie and he's like i gotta be honest with you he says i tell you what man it was doing the bathtub scene with with jenna jameson <laughs> <laughs> i was like well why he was like jenna jameson in a bathtub man and he was like i had wood and i was like <laughs> I would assume you would. <laughs> it was just so funny because he was just, it was him being Howard Stern at that point yeah, before he kind of, I knew Howard Stern's become a lot less like he was in the day when he would, you know, be very misogynistic for lack of a better term. I, I kind of liked the older days just because that was entertaining. And yeah, it was definitely fun. It was just different, but I love Howard Stern anyhow. But he was, he actually like thanked us for waiting and took the time. I just, I, he came across as being a very genuine person. And I was like, man, I'd love to have a beer with you. Just, to think about what he had been through and and him just revolutionizing radio and communication. For sure. No, I mean, he's definitely like one of the first people to be able to like raise a middle finger to the FCC and kind yeah. of do whatever you wanted. But, you know, in a way that sort of, sort of rode the line. Exactly. The rules, but didn't quite. And so and it's funny because I actually interviewed Ajit Pai who ran the FCC for a while. And Ajit was a really cool guy too. I, I should have, <laughs> but he's like one of those guys that hate to give the finger. Cause I thought Ajit was a pretty good guy. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like, no, the FCC is like sometimes a little uptight because it's yeah. like, Ooh, watch your language. <laughs> but have you noticed this? I'm not sure if you noticed this is a slight aside on CNN. They've been using, they've been saying shit a lot. Oh, that's interesting. I haven't noticed that. They're I getting away with it now. I tend not to watch it, but like that's interesting. I watch it in the morning. I get up. I, yeah. I toggle through my news, and I'm like, since when? When this did they a start lot? saying shit on CNN? Like the past like three weeks. Oh, that's interesting. Legit. Like it you was think, like a thing. You think it was like a committee decision? They're like, we should start saying shit to remain relevant. Or? Maybe I would like to know because I just, I mean, I got nothing against it. But one thing I have a hard time really Does doing. It feel forced? Does it seem like they're trying no, to no? Shit it, it was all in relation to Trump, so I think it kind of just yeah. came out. They're just like, what a shithead. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> almost. So not quite that bad. But, 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 but yeah, but something along something along those lines. So it was kind of like, oh, geez. But anyhow, I, all I know is that like. I figured it would be like, have you seen the latest shit in Syria? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no. It was, yeah. it was something around something with, yeah. The Check shit. the shit out over Check here. Check the shit out over here. How's that, technology. Sh how's that <laughs> shitty weather in the West when it keeps yeah, exactly. raining? So yeah, exactly. Uh, that is quite <laughs> shitty. Harold, back to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Harold, back to you. Well, fuck hell. You know, so. <laughs> and then you're like, you kind of lose your credibility somehow. But I think there's I think there's moments when it's very appropriate. Moments when you're like, you don't have to do that. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it doesn't seem contrived, I feel like that's a exactly. little, a little bit better. I agree with you. 100%. You can always tell when somebody's like forcing a swear because like they're not used to it, but they feel like they're supposed to. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm there with you. Anyhow, that was my I, little aside. Nah, <laughs> I, I had a boss when I was at SpaceX as an intern and he had grown up in Utah, you know, which is pretty conservative Mormon. Absolutely. Area. Oh, yeah. And so he didn't really swear, but like SpaceX was a swearing culture. Like I would Elon believe would it. swear in company wide announcements and stuff. And so this guy came on and, and he was like, you know, things would have me be like, holy schmeckle. Like, oh, holy dude, schmeckle. Clearly you've never sworn. Like, you, know, no, you know, like, but he feels like he had to. But yeah, you felt like, like you had to put some, some emphasis you know, and that was your way of showing you're angry. Like, you know, I come from a Jewish family. You know, that means penis, right? Exactly. You know, like, so, I don't know. <laughs> So uh, what are the, some of the things you're, you're interested in, in in the tech scene in Pittsburgh? Like what's, mm -hmm. what's coming next? What are you tracking? Yeah. What two, you, what uh, two, two, look out for? two key things for me, actually maybe three. I don't know. Let me, let me think this through as we go through it. I'm going to start off with robotics because, hey, I'm talking to somebody who's deep in the robotics thing. I still go back and say I think robotics is completely badass in Pittsburgh. I, I love what we're doing here in Pittsburgh, and I want to see it get even better 
better. And I and I and I still say we're kicking Boston's butt. Maybe not in commercialization yet, because that, that's our big thing. Is Pittsburgh's awesome for R and D, right? We're like an yeah, R and D right. town, and I love the research. I mean, anytime I go through CMU and I see what people are working on, I'm like, yeah, man, you keep doing that. Then I'm like, let's commercialize. Yeah, that. of course. <laughs> let's make some money on that stuff. But I, I but that's going to happen. That is there. I think without a doubt. And so for me, it's like I want to see. I, I would like to see some of these bigger companies get bigger like like you see some of these folks where it's like 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 the Carnegie Robox of the world like yeah. and I think it's the thing with them but they might want to stay a certain size but I look at like the customers they have and what's going on like you well, guys they've been growing though I mean oh, they're, they're bigger than they used to be and absolutely they, they've yeah been trying to grow. and I'm like man like but to keep to, to really have a couple places that really become like known like this is where this stuff is built right like when there's vision systems like you're going over to you know Carnegie Robox because what the stuff they put on other people's robots or their things are the absolute like bar none and, and everything. Hellbender. And, and I, let's talk about Hellbender, man. <laughs> I love Hellbender. I mean, they, they kind of, you know, they were once part of Carnegie Robotics. I know there's some like, I don't want to, yeah, they, <laughs> but if they, but all, well, Brian was the chief product officer. Yeah, he was the chief. Robotics, it's on his LinkedIn. Exactly. Okay, good. I did, sometimes I know people get sore or weird about stuff, but I'm just like, I, I've hung out with Brian a few times. I hung out with him at CES. He's a great dude. Brian's awesome, dude. And what he's building over there is so cool. And I know he's, he's one of those guys where he wants to build something huge, right? Absolutely. And that's what I love. He, he wants to dream really big and it takes some balls to do that. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it does. I mean, it takes a lot because it, there's so much that can go wrong. And, and so I look at like Astrobotic, right? I love Astrobotic and everybody was so bummed when it didn't work. But this is this is hard effing work, dude, right? Yeah. I mean, this is like, you're not gonna get it on the first try because the, the, the thing they're, they're trying to do is rough. So I'm like, no, you, it's not like giving you a pass. It's like, this is part of what you're gonna do. They know full well that the odds were stacked against them. And then what the, uh, the, the place from Texas went up and there's kind of landed and stuff. So yay, but then it fell over. <laughs> I, I didn't track that part. Yeah, it fell over, so it's not it doesn't operate anymore because the solar panels can't uh, it's can't can't face. And uh, so anyhow, so so it's it's tough work. What you guys are doing is really you're solving really hard problems. I look at Gecko Robotics and what Jake Lucerian's doing over there. Oh, yeah. I love that dude. Yeah. Oh my god, I I interviewed him. The first time I interviewed him, he maybe had 15 people working there. And I, and first off, I, what do I love about Jake is he's a Grove City guy, okay? Because I love CMU, but it's really cool to see that that there, there can be robotics technology that doesn't come just from CMU, right? Yeah. Which I think is really cool, and and to see that he's one of those guys where he's always like I, he always had a customer, he always got paid. I don't think he's done anything for free. That's awesome, right? Because he business guy, like he know he's like my stuff has value. I remember him telling me that. So when even his first test projects, the people he worked with, it wasn't like I'm going to test this for free. Like they they compensated, right? And and what he's doing is saving people's saving people's lives. He's keep people safe. Let a robot go in and inspect crazy boilers, you know. And then even better yet, use the power of AI and and vision systems to capture all the data and then be able to predict like maybe there's going to be cracks here and it can keep track of things like that. I'm like, whoa. So you got these worlds of like robotics and then AI coming together, which is my next thing. I think Pittsburgh and AI, once again, CMU, AI, hello. It becomes like, okay, there's so much to go on with AI here and the possibilities are just endless on that. So I get excited. Yeah, no, I do too. It's been fascinating to watch and, and really excited to see kind of the robotics industry here. Yeah. Going to, as you put it, more commercial places. Yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, I love the research and research is awesome, but I get excited when people start selling stuff and making money, man. Yeah. I want people building companies and then like buying Ferraris and stuff. Like I just, I want yeah. people making money. That's where it's at for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now it, it's an exciting time. I mean, and I think for me, you know, I, I I mean, I, I don't know. I studied business and computer science. When Excellent. I was in school and, Very cool. You know, I always wanted to earn money on what I did, but I also love R and D. So yeah, that's cool. I have this dichotomy of you know, like R and D, but like we should make products. You know, we there should, you go. Just take that R and D. And so, mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I feel like you know, my company SKA is is a microcosm of Pittsburgh, but. Very much so. No, when I first met you and I learned what you were up to, I thought I was so impressed. I'm like, this is cool, man. You're kind of like, you're just doing your thing. Like, I, I love that. You're plugging into where you need to get plugged in. And you're, once again, you're building really cool stuff. Not easy stuff to build here. And you're doing that. Like, and you said you're doing it for yourself, which is the hard way. Like I said, you could be an engineer anywhere you wanted to, I think. I'm sure any robotics company would be like, Spencer, we'd love to have you on board running some projects for us or 
developing some stuff, right? But you're like, no, I'm gonna do it myself. Yeah, that's, that's cool, a, man. A, more fulfilled when I do it that way. I like it. That's cool, and that, and we need to inspire that with so many more people, right? Like, I want more, and I want people from around the world coming here to do that. Well, I think they do. Like you mentioned CMU, and I think mm-hmm. that helps. I think University of Pittsburgh helps. Totally, dude. Yeah, and I don't want to discount um, you. You're, I mean, Pitt's my alma mater, and yeah, Pitt, mine and Pitt too. yeah, okay, excellent. Pitt on the engineering side, freaking yeah. amazing, and on on the health side. Double amazing. Yeah. Like, and that's why Pittsburgh, I, I got in a lot of trouble one time for saying that if it wasn't for Carnegie Mellon University, that Pittsburgh would be more like Detroit. Right? Oh, interesting. And people are like, that's oh, that's so like mean. Look at Detroit like a. F- so no, for me, it was like you know, Detroit gets a lot of love because it's, it's this down and out city that's trying to come back. And I, I got nothing against Detroit at all. But Pittsburgh had CMU in the research that was able to, I think, put it ahead of Detroit. We could have been like Detroit where we had a bigger hole to dig ourselves out of, and it wasn't as big of, as big of a hole that I think Detroit has. So yeah. It's not really a knock on Detroit per se. Well, but they've been coming up as well. Like I was absolutely. there last year for a defense conference. Yeah, and no, there's there's lots going on there. Nice. You know, I, I toured a company that was doing really, a couple of companies mm-hmm. that were doing really interesting absolutely. things. Absolutely, no, no, yeah. There was venture capital money into some of the stuff there. Absolutely. Uh, it was, it was it had come a long way. And I, I, I just think, feel like Detroit's had this, tremendous like marketing behind them where people like have branded as the comeback city and the heart of what was the I mean, ministry. Yeah. All that stuff to me. And I get it. Like we don't have that here in Pittsburgh. We just had Carnegie Mellon and Pitt and our other universities that were able yeah, to really build stuff. We just call it something different. I mean, like, we had our steel industry crow cause oh, yeah. and you know, like, yeah, out of the burning Hulk of that, you know, is this new tech industry. Yeah. Know? But we, were, but we were ahead we were of the called it the comeback city. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just ahead of the curve uh, yeah. than, than what Detroit was because we had this. Uh, we had these these universities that could be very fundamental in in making sure that we could transform ourselves from the steel into an actual tech industry. So I think it's cool. I don't know. I love Pittsburgh. It's it, I can't imagine living anyplace else because yeah. I think it's just been tremendous. It, just seeing the changes over the past ten years. When I look at the changes over the past twenty five, it's like oh my. God, it's it's night and day, and we got so much more work to do, man. And it'll never be done. Yeah, for sure. Like I just, I'm so proud of what Pittsburgh was able to build back in the day. Just the, you're talking the, about like in like the industrial revolution. Yeah, I mean, dude, yeah. go. I mean, go down to the. I mean, we used to go into the Kerry Furnace before you were allowed to go into the Kerry Furnace. That's cool. You could ride your bike down there, hop the fence, and you could just walk through it and do whatever. And you're like, someone ran this thing. Like this thing made pig iron like you know it's like how did they how did this work you know and there was like eight more of them or seven more of them lined up along the river in just this one section that's kicking wild. out stuff and you're like that's awesome i i think that i mean and that built this country yeah that to me is one pretty World exciting <laughs> pretty much so yeah I, I, that's why i think i think that's why i love pittsburgh so much i get goosebumps thinking about it sometimes just because i'm thinking our city's played a big role in the, in, in the world. We'll, I feel like there's a lot to be said for the, the, co- the co-op model, though. I mean, I've been I've been getting into that with some of the stuff I've been doing at work lately, okay. and I won't get super into yeah, that. Yeah, I hear you. It just isn't announced yet. But, you know, I, I, I think just pulling resources between totally. multiple entities is you can do a lot more than you can do by yourself. It helps everybody. I and agree Even with starting you. a company is like yeah. a version, you know. I'm all about it. I, I, I think get creative. Why not? Find a way to save the money, save resources, and make yourself stronger. Amen to that. <laughs> super fun cool so i think we're getting to a good point okay. um is there anything you want to plug as we as we kind of plug wind down here i always like to plug my radio show man like I, it's it's shameless self-promotion but I've, I've been doing radio for 16 years now and i i do it with my boss our ceo audrey russo at the tech council and we're like the yin and yang like audrey's super analytical she's super smart and i just like telling stories and i like <laughs> i like making people laugh and um, I really enjoy being able to interview people like you and, and bring them on the air and let Pittsburgh's general population. There's a lot of Spencer Krauses out there. They're building really cool stuff, and they're what making Pittsburgh hum right now. Seriously, like people don't understand why they're traffic jams because people are living in Pittsburgh again and doing stuff because people are working at companies and building companies that are solving really tough problems. So I love bringing that to the airwaves every Sunday. So, hey, wake up early. 6 a.m. every Sunday, KDKA. Hey, KDKA was the world's first commercially licensed radio station. Are you serious? Absolutely, 100% serious. There's a plaque for for Frank Conrad in Wilkinsburg where his first station was, I think, early 1920s, 21, where the first broadcast went out. He was part of Westinghouse. That's wild. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Pittsburgh has been a leader in so many freaking cool things. And to that be must able- have taken a set of balls to do that when nobody had a radio set. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, it was a thing. Yeah, I mean, think about how radio 
kept the world together during the world wars and stuff. That was, oh, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, radio was the first social media, right? I mean, outside of newspapers, I mean, something that would hit mass people. Well, the fact that the you moment. would know, like, you know, what President Truman's voice sounded like. Exactly. You, know? you weren't yeah. reading it. You're actually hearing from the person. So, anyhow, so it's kind of fun to have. I think there's a, a, a tradition of radio in Pittsburgh, obviously, and having Tech Five has been so much fun. Yeah. And I can't imagine, like, not doing it, especially hanging out with Audrey and doing it. To me, is just always a blast because she lets me do my thing. I let her do her thing. And we, we, we just try to have fun with it. So, yeah. And, of course, if you can't wake up early, I can't blame you. But just wherever you get your podcasts, look for Tech Five Radio. Nice. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Jonathan, thank you for coming on. I've had a blast tonight. Likewise. No, I appreciate you having me on. I was, I was I'm glad we got it. It took us a while to get this together. And uh, thanks for having patience and uh, super fun. And I need to have you stop back and get, I know, I think you're going to have some, some, some big news pretty soon. So when that yeah. happens, let me know. And then when we can talk about it, we'll bring you over to my show and talk about what you're up to. Oh, I would love to. I know it's, 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 it's some good stuff. And I, I think you might be one of those people I can say, I knew Spencer when he was doing this, this, and this. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> thanks, simple Jonathan. as that. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, Spencer. Thanks for joining us today. If you've made it this far, chances are you'll like other episodes too. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, and Radio Public. Subscribe today to get notified when the latest episodes release and support the channel. Collaborative with Spencer Krauss is sponsored by SKA Custom Robots and Machines. If you're in the market for robotics contract engineering services, please consider hiring SKA Custom Robots and Machines. They sponsor this podcast and solve some of the toughest engineering problems in the world. SKA Custom Robots and Machines can be found at www.ska.solutions. Thanks again and see you.